has released an updated plan claiming it will soon provide faster and easier health care, but it's drawn mixed reviews from industry leaders and critics. Now, Ontario Health Minister Sylvia Jones is joining us this morning live with more on what we can expect. Minister Jones, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to be here on this chilly Friday. On this very cold Friday. Uh, we'll start off with the plan that was announced yesterday. Uh, connected and convenient health care plan, it's being dubbed. Uh, now, there is a variety of feedback, as we mentioned, from many stakeholders. But one concern is that it, it won't provide the necessary, uh, I guess, uh, the measures that need to be taken right now in order to make it an immediate impact on hospitals and the overwhelmed health care system. Are there parts of this plan that we can see kick in immediately in order to start um, getting some of the backlogs down as well as getting some of the ER wait times down? Absolutely. We've made some investments with uh, $300 million available to hospitals that allow them to expand their surgical units if they have capacity. So we've done that and we've seen some hospitals being able to ramp up the number of surgeries they do. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, we announced uh, three cataract uh, areas where in Windsor, Kitchener, Waterloo and Ottawa, we now have existing cataract facilities who are able to do uh, almost 1,400 additional cataract surgeries. So there's a lot of things that we're doing already, but we also need to plan for the future because we know that our Ontario uh, population is growing and we're aging. So we're doing short, medium, and long-term goals to make sure that we're ready for the next generation of healthcare workers and individuals who need to access uh, our publicly funded healthcare system. And you mentioned uh, some of the cataract surgeries uh, and, of course, just a few weeks ago, the announcement that some publicly funded surgeries are going to be done in private clinics. That's the push from the province itself. There is still a concern, though, that staff that are needed in the public system may be lost to the private system. What's being done in order to prevent that? So I want to reinforce that we actually have in Ontario over 800 uh, surgical and diagnostic community centers that are available for people outside of our traditional hospital system. And so that expansion will ensure that people get a faster access. You know, Tammy, at the end of the day, we need to have people who are waiting for cataract surgeries, who are waiting for hip and knee surgeries to get that access faster because it's impacting. It's impacting their quality of life, their mental health, not to be able to interact with their family, their work and their community. And the expansion really will build on what we have already got in community. But more importantly, we're also building a larger health system because we understand, as I said, aging population, larger population, which is why we have a learn and stay program, for example. Nurses who want to train to become nurses have an opportunity to have their tuition and their books covered if they agree to practice in an underserviced area for an additional two years after they're trained. There's lots of pieces that we're doing that are really making a difference on the ground. And I'm, uh, I'm very proud of this plan because it shows the people of Ontario what we're doing and it ensures that they can track and keep us accountable. Are, are you concerned, though, that there may be some staff in an already depleted situation in the, in the public system that could go to the private system, especially if they're offered more money, with the province still appealing Bill 124? So again, as I said, you know, we have 800 existing surgical and community uh, surgical units that happen outside of community, in community, outside of hospitals. Uh, we're building capacity. We've ensured that we have now uh, over 1,200 nurses registered in the province of Ontario alone in 2022. 6,000 of those were internationally educated nurses waiting for their assessment and ultimately uh, licensure through the College of Nurses. So lots of pieces, lots of expansions happening. And again, when we make assessments to expand the surgical and diagnostic piece, part of the application process will make sure that they have sufficient health human resources to actually do the, uh, the surgeries and the diagnostic that we need in community. Because again, wait times, 
are unacceptable and we need to work on that to make sure that people aren't waiting months and months for critical surgeries. All right. Finally, Minister, I want to ask about the Premier's meeting that is set to be happening with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau next Tuesday. Uh, when it comes to trying to bang out a health care deal among the feds and the provinces, are, are you thinking that this is something that can be done immediately and, and meet some of the requirements that the premiers are asking for? Well, I'm certainly more optimistic than I was a number of months ago. have to give a lot of credit to Premier Ford and the other premiers who stepped up and stood their ground and said, we need a better health care deal with the federal government. You know, so many people think it's a 50-50 partnership. And Tammy, as you know, we are at 22% of our funding comes from the federal government. We need to bump that up to at least 35%. Let's have a willing partner at the table. We've invested since 2018 over $14 billion in our Ontario health care system. And that's over and above the money that we spent during COVID to ensure that we were able to have a robust system continue. So we're making the investment. Other territories and provinces are making the investment. We really just need a federal government that's prepared to be part of that partnership. All right, Minister Sylvia Jones, a health minister here in Ontario, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Stay well.